you know, just take this brett doofus off the show already. <laughs> he has nothing, absolutely nothing to the show. Mark to the rescue, again. Here's at least five episodes. He's in five of them. And he hasn't improved one iota. One iota. Come on, <laughs> be prepared. Bring notes that the pressure is too much for you to think without prompting. Or pre-record a video and play that. But for the love of good, do something to add to the show instead of dragging it down every episode. Note. I'm 40 minutes in! <laughs> <laughs> For the love of good, that old saying. Fred, I, I hope you take that into account. I want a movie poster for the love of good. Oh, with, good. With Internet! Brett. With Brett the Doofus! <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Schmoville, that podcast that's all about your schmoes. No. Christian Harloff and Mark Ellis and, you know, that whole gang. Thank you for joining us. My name is Ryan Snelling. And this is Paul Wolf. Yes, thank you for joining us. We had an awesome episode of the Schmoes No Show last night. Um, but before we get to that, I want to know what's going on with you, Paul. Are you doing all right? I am doing pretty well, man. Uh, a lot of great things happening this week with, you know, uh, the jobs thing, uh, can't see one way or the other. Can't say one way or the other. I should say. Um, I actually have to wait another couple of days for uh, anything about the job interview. A um, lot of cool baseball news. You know, working at the the Rubber Ducks stuff, and uh, just uh, all around a good week so far. Go Rubber Ducks! You know, what's it. that merchandise look like for the Rubber Ducks? I, I feel like it would all look like babies' clothing with that kind of. Um, it's actually, I mean, they. If you take a look at it online, it's a really cool logo. Uh, it's it's very reminiscent of the area. And, you know, Akron, Akron's the rubber capital of the world. You know, tires and Firestone and Goodyear, all those those types of tires. And um, the rubber duck, it's got the thing you know, on the tire tread and a cool little like duck face. Um, and it's a, a mean duck face. It's kind of got little like flames <laughs> behind it. Definitely not like a, the squeaky, you know, Ernie Ernie rubber duck from Sesame Street. But right. um, yeah, I definitely would take a look at it. Uh, there's some pretty cool logos out there that um, that are uh, not what you think when you think rubber ducks. Uh, I think I'm starting a new podcast, Paul. That's that's what uh, I've been doing this week is planning a, th- a third podcast. Wow. Yeah, I, I'm scared to death, but I think I've got to figure it out. It's funny because last week I was talking about how busy I am and I'm still very busy, but I think I've worked it out to where this podcast could exist in all the times that I'm not busy. So that's Very exciting. Um, more on that if it happens later on. But I need to tell you something. The title of this podcast says that we've got the exclusive on Mark Ellis's $3,000 bet story that Christian forgot to mention in the Schmoes No Show last night. So that will be revealed later on in the show. Paul, how do you mm. feel about the fact that I am the only person in existence that knows what that story is? I am intrigued, and it's also kind of cool that uh, he has the faith in us to break that story. So I'm looking forward to later that later in the show to to kind of talk about it. I'm gonna do my best to save it till the end of the show, but I've been known to blow my load early. So sorry in advance. That's what she said. <laughs> it, it already worked. It's a sexual joke. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's definitely coming up. So you got to stay tuned to Schmoville to listen to that. Um, before we get into this week in Schmoville, I want to address the fans. You guys, you've got this email set up called schmovillepod at gmail.com. That's where we want you to send your uh, request inquiries to uh, be on the show. Yeah, we don't have a guest this week. That's because we had like. A couple of things fall through, actually, uh, and part of the, you can blame me for part of that because uh, I could probably do a better job at having a backup guest now that I, now that I know that we might need backup guests. So uh, I'll do better with that for uh, you know things in the future. But we were supposed to have somebody from the Schmoes No Crew, and I don't know if you want to say who it was, Paul, but it was the Tricena Ceratops himself JTE he was supposed to be here uh, and for some reason uh, communication got lost and uh, he's he's not here so JTE if you are listening we do have that slot available for you uh, just need to work out uh, time frame difference because of course we're closer to the east coast you guys are on the west so 
we're here, man. Just reach out. Yeah, I think if he ended up recording with us today, it's it's eight thirty over there right now. So uh, that yeah. might be a little early for them. I understand that. I didn't wake up until ten thirty. So, but yeah, I mean. Part of that is my fault, too, because I can't always be flexible on Fridays. But, yeah, we want JT on for sure. So, uh, JT is always welcome. And then uh, my backup guest also fell through. Um, We couldn't make it work either. So, here we are again, uh, another week without a guest. But, yeah, make sure you uh, send us an email at smovillepod at gmail.com. If you've already done so, I promise I've seen your emails. Don't worry. We're going to work it out very soon. And I think we've got a couple others in the pipeline. Um, Tyler Myers uh, will be coming on here in the next few weeks. And, of course, we teased Robert Butler III coming on in the next couple weeks. So uh, a lot of uh, fun guests from uh, Schmozno and all that gang in Schmoville. So um, do you have anything else you want to bring up before we go into this week in Schmoville? No, you definitely made a very good point there, guys. Everybody listen one more time. That email address, please send your requests to that email because um, hearing my messenger go off while I'm in bed sleeping, you know, is kind of, it's not rude, but, you know, it's definitely inconvenient uh, to <laughs> us because I do have to go, to, I have to get up early, help kids get up, get get out the door. It's about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. And uh, if I'm hearing my phone ringing, you know, with messages about asking to be on the show. Yeah, just save it to those emails, guys. Just that's that's just kind of a common courtesy on that on that end, and um, and we'll we'll make sure to uh, let you guys know if you're going to be up uh, next or uh, when you're going to be on, if at all. That again, the email is smovillepod at gmail. Uh, that's there for you guys, or you can just ask us questions. You can talk, whatever. You can do whatever with that email. That's there for you guys. So yeah, this week in Smoville, shall we? Go for it. All right, let's talk about the last weekend's uh, Schmodown between – it was the team title match between Team Schmoes and Team B.O.B. How did you feel about it? Yeah, it, it went down just as we kind of expected. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of surprises. Uh, again, JTE. Again, I wish he was on here today uh, so I could uh, kind of – praise him a little bit for for carrying that uh, the team of course uh we we kind of touched upon that anyway but uh, he he rattled off a lot of good answers there and it was uh it seemed like he, he was it was going to be a closer match than it would have been um and uh like like our city uh, i'm from you know the cleveland area jte man two times in two weeks championship matches and didn't get it done. Uh, I'm, I'm familiar with that. We have some pretty crappy sports teams out here, <laughs> so I can relate. Uh, Indians, Cavs, Browns, you know, I mean, the Cavs, okay, whatever. We, we may or may not do it this year. I have no faith, but, oh. um, <laughs> what, man, it, it, um, it was a good matchup. I really enjoyed Christian's rock, uh, invitation out there. It was, it was, uh, a lot more entertaining. They did dress up, uh, and uh, they had a, a good theme going on. Finstock without a shirt and his homemade belt. Uh, it was very, very 80s, 90s wrestling esque. It was, it was very cool. Um, a lot of cool memes coming out of uh, Mark's little costume there. <laughs> um, but it was, it was really good. I mean, the way it was handled, the the five rounds, um, the you know the usage of uh, back and forths with who's handling what round. Um, I, I really liked it. And uh, the outcome, of course, like I said, uh, I wasn't surprised, but it was, uh, like I said, JT did a really nice job. So he, he to me, got the MVP because of, of how strong he was on his team carrying that uh, throughout, even though they did lose. Huge props to uh, Campia and Roca, by the way, for hosting. Oh, absolutely. They did, uh, yeah. they did a great job. Um, yeah, I, this was probably in my top three favorite Schmodowns ever. It, and we talked about last week, I believe. Uh, I asked you the question, how did you feel about Riley uh, knocking um, JTE out? Uh, do you think that's the better match, or is it worse because it's a TKO and you're not seeing them like neck and neck and actually compete? This was a competition. I, I never, You could never once count Team B.O.B. out. Even if you wanted to, you couldn't. I mean, it was just a really fun episode, and the fact that Harloff comes out with The Rock, that was one of my favorite things from uh, the Ultimate Schmodown and I think Phase 5 when I first saw it. All, all that stuff, I, I loved it, and I love 
the competition between them. And yeah, it was just one of my favorite slowdowns. period. So I was very, very happy with it, which is funny because when I heard the next matchup between Jeff Snyder and El Mayimbe, I just kind of had a shoulder shrug. I was like, I, that's kind of, is that a great match to follow up with? What do you think? Uh, it definitely is a step down. Uh, however, um, Umberto uh, Gonzalez being the El Miambe, um, you know, I just, I, I like him a lot. He's very knowledgeable. So I, again, big step down. Uh, however, I'm still going to watch. I'm still going to take a look at it and root El Miambe on to victory. Yeah. That's my prediction. Oh, that's your prediction. Okay. Well, yes, sir. the reason I just kind of shrug my shoulders is because these are two people that I've never seen in a schmodown. So I, I, I'm very familiar with El Mayimbe. I'm a fan of Heroic Insider. I watch every week. Uh, just seeing him in general. I mean, he's on movie fights. He's been on Collider Heroes and everything. I've seen him around for a while, just not in the schmoes umbrella. And uh, I like him a lot. He's a, uh, I mean, he's a gentleman. He's the man for sure. Uh, I just don't really know how much he knows about movie trivia. Um, I know he's, you know, obviously the superhero guy. So I, I feel like if we get those, if we get a category like uh, Marvel or anything like that, then he's going to do really well. Oh, yeah. You know what? Hold on a minute. You got me a little, little thinking, second guessing here. You're right. He does do a lot of s- the superhero stuff. Uh, just like Schnapp, it might, might come into that. Schnapp has a lot of knowledge with, with superheroes and yeah. he didn't do so hot. Um, I know that Snyder does a lot of, other movie news and breaking other movie news and does other uh, types of categories and uh, other types of movie news. So, uh, you know, I second guessing now that, now that you said that, um, I do know that the poll that we have on Schmoville uh, was pretty close too uh, with, vo- with voting on who would win. I think it was by like two or three votes. I think yeah. El Miambe was up by two or three votes, I think. So yeah, now I got to rethink that. Talk to me at the end. Maybe I'll have to change my mind a little bit. I, I'm not very, like, I'm rooting for El Mayimbe. That's who I picked to win, but I'm not, I'm just not very confident that he might just brain fart in, in any other category. So the only reason you never I'm picking him because I know absolutely next to nothing about Jeff Snyder. When I went to look him up, I realized that um, I followed him on one of our uh, podcasts, or I think on Film Beef's account, and I didn't recognize the name, but apparently I followed him, and I, mm. I think we... I think we discussed something about TV when I was doing TV recaps. So um, I'm not sure. I don't know how much he knows. I'm, you know, that's my fault. But I'm I'm going to go with El NBA just for that, and just because I've known him longer, uh, I'm more of a fan of him than Snyder. So that's all I've got to say about that. But I'm going to segue right into uh, the next thing I want to talk about, which was Jeff Snyder on Movie Talk yesterday. I did not watch the episode yesterday. I was very very busy. But you did. So tell me what was going on, because I saw some nasty things in the chat, and obviously they were they made a comment about it at the end of last night's Schmoes No Show. What's going they, on with Jeff? It's the whole first impressions thing. You know, you only get one chance to make a good first impression. So those people out there who didn't know the in Snyder um, got a bad taste in their mouth okay they did uh he came on and was a guest and i do actually enjoy that christian brings on one or both competitors of the schmodown on movie talk uh to not only kind of get people familiar with them if they might not know who they are or gets their you know gets them out there gets their uh, get the hype going for the sh- for the actual schmodown and tell you what he may be knowledgeable he may know his stuff, but the man brought down the show. I mean, because every time there was an there was a type of a comment uh, from either Clark or from Christian, it was like during the buy and sell segment, he sold everything. It was sell, sell, so sell. So you're kind of you're feeling was, a little bit of this negativity as well. It's like, a lot of negativity, especially you uh, don't, you, you're not a very good hater. Like you can you can find some you can always find something good in people, Paul. But you just I can't. you just don't like when people are negative. I yeah. guess that's all and, you're doing. Yeah, it seemed like that. And you know, like I said, he he, he can he probably knows his stuff. I know that they did a, a Q and A on, on Facebook Live right after, and he showed a little bit more of his personality. But uh, you know, saying you know he he really 
kind of I could feel the internet breaking when he said that uh, Nathan Fillion is just a TV star. But then now hearing that Castle was canceled, you know, now he's not a TV <laughs> star. Um, so I felt I felt that rumbling throughout the internet, and I also you know hearing you know he hated The Rock for for ruining his scoop um, kind of, I don't know if it was a jealousy factor or what it was, but he had the scoop of Jack Black uh, possibly being and uh, overacting in the Jumanji movie. And I'm um, sorry, not overacting. That's just my opinion. But um, he was mad that he broke like, you're not a critic. Why are you, you're not a, so what? He's he's a more of a public figure and people are going to react better to him announcing him in the movie than Jeff Snyder. So get over it, move on, go on to the next scoop. Do you follow um, like uh do you follow Slash Film or Frosty and any of those guys on Twitter? Any of the bloggers? I do. Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of times there are discussions between them about when certain uh avenues release things before they do. And there it's a it's a very they they have a lot of principles when it comes to posting scoops okay. and things like that and when people steal things. Well, not really steal things, mm-hmm. just like I remember there was a story when Netflix released a story before they could and it just like hurt it was some kind of or it was something crazy like that. I don't know. They just yeah. they have their principles. Um I just I'm not in that space, so I don't know how much I can speak on this, but I I think I agree right. with what you said. I'm not going to pass a judgment on this guy just because I have I, I don't know anything about it. I, I didn't watch movie talk, but just based on that one thing that he brought up, I think I disagree. But I, I would like to hear what he said uh, about it on movie talk. Yeah, none, none of what he did on movie talk is affecting how I'm going into this to the uh, schmo down. I just I'm just a fan and I've known El Mayimbe and that's the only reason why I'm picking him. But it's interesting that you brought, brought that up. Was there anything else to uh, mention on that? When I mentioned the whole thing about first impressions, this was my first impression seeing him. So, um, you know, getting getting that hype out there and, and then hearing and seeing what he did kind of definitely made me go for El Miyambe a whole lot more than I did before. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I think the next thing I want to talk about for this week at Schmoville, and this will probably be the last, is that Perry started this new series called Best of the Week. Uh, it's pretty cool. Every Saturday, basically, they, they uh, compile all the clips from the previous week's shows, and they just they just recap. It's it's sort of like what we do here, but mainly for Collider and a lot better production quality. Um, and I also liked how they included things from Collider.com, like fun articles to go back and read, because I, I follow Collider, but usually when I catch it, it's just the main story stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, in, in that segment, there were a lot of cool articles that I want to go back and read, but yeah, I mean, that, that's just a great segment to, uh, like if you happen to miss a week in Collider, you can catch up on that. And it was good for me because I didn't have to rewatch last week's Smowdown before this podcast. I could just watch that. And, uh, it, you know, reminded me of what went down. So yeah, Definitely support that every uh, Saturday. I don't know if they release this or not. I don't know if Mailbag is still going to come out on Saturday. Um, I, I know that Mailbag isn't really what we talk about here, and you know how could we? But uh, yeah, the uh, Mailbag does still continue on the weekends. That's why you're here, Paul. I love you. Are we ready to talk about Mark Ellis's three thousand dollar bet? No. Okay. I'm, well, let's talk about the Schmoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's my terrible attempt at a tease. Wow. <laughs> Did you fall for it? I almost said I'm ready, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> well, if you fell for it, then maybe Schmoville fell for it. Yep, it's not coming out yet. <laughs> I uh, Yeah, let's talk about the Schmo's Dump Show last night. Number, All right, let's do it. Number 232, it's a Civil War spoiler-heavy discussion. Paul, I think we're going to have a hard time because it's hard enough trying to not discuss movies on here, but that's pretty much all they did last night. <laughs> so it's gonna be really, really tough. Um, yeah. So we had uh, who did we have on the table last night? We had at the main table Christian, Miri, because again Mark is was out, yeah. uh, and then we had uh, Brett, who is officially the fourth chair on the table, and I'm actually really excited to hear that. And now in the rotation, Shanae Dufries. Yeah. I here, here's what I'll say about Brett. I I've always liked Brett. I've defended him. I, I just figured someone who's been there longer would get the fourth chair. 
someone who's a little bit more well-rounded. Last night, he seemed to have an enthusiasm, a newfound enthusiasm for the Marvel movies. But, I mean, last week, you can't deny that he didn't have a whole lot to say after his segment. So, I just thought it was curious that they picked him to be a fourth chair. Did you feel any of that? You know what? Uh, we did. I did kind of see a little bit about that. But again, it's the first time he's officially on the uh, the main table as the fourth chair. Um, so as of now, you know, it's, it's a wait and see. Uh, we definitely had a lot of discussion last night, a lot of debate, a lot of good talking uh, about uh, the pros and cons about the MCU, the DC universe, the, the Civil War, all the other movies involved in it. And um, I think because he hadn't seen most or all um, of what they were kind of discussing. He didn't have a lot to say, uh, but I did, I was intrigued that he did, he did mention because of what they talked about, he wants to see and get caught up with all of the things that have gone on in the MCU. So I think that, that I think it was in one of those wait and see kind of situations. I'm proud to see the him on the fourth chair, but I yeah. do see where you're, I do see where you're coming from, where maybe a Makuga could be on the, uh, on the main t- uh, table or somebody that has, you know, had more experience. Like, I, I know that they kind of always want, want to, I was going to say they almost want to just have one f- female at the main table, but Miri was, was co-hosting uh, for, just for today. Uh, but again, I'm happy with Brett being there. I'm, I'm, it's awesome to see him there. And uh, like I said, we'll we'll just uh, wait and see to see what uh, what else he could bring. Uh, maybe another topic next week. Uh, he'll have more to say. Speaking of Makuga, I think this was the first time in Phase Six that he was absent. I might be wrong by that, but yeah, he was. Uh, his absence was definitely definitely felt for sure. Yeah. His absence, JTE's absence, the absence of any televisions or any posters or any anything whatsoever. It was like a, it was it was interesting. It was a, definitely a stripped down episode, but it was uh, very well done in the discussion and a lot of great things were were were, were talked about. Is it possible that Makuga jumped ship and took all the TVs with him? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he's good with tweeting. He's good with with, with that. So maybe he took all the TVs. I don't know. <laughs> Um, how do you feel about Sinead being there? I'm loving it. I'm glad she's I'm welcome, welcome I, Sinead to uh Schmoe's Night. I, yeah, absolutely, yes, definitely. Uh, it was awesome to see. I got I got that news early uh of in the week that that was gonna be an official thing. Um and I was very happy that uh, that, that she's there now. Um she, she's breaking out of her shell, uh being just the host from for movie talk now, being in the rotation at the main table. Uh but I do want to ask her if she listens to this, uh, something that kind of bugged me. And I know we talked about this pre-show, but I noticed she had an alcoholic beverage there. Oh, do, do, do I, do I not remember her just having Harrison? And you if don't that's know the that case, she's, you don't know that she's breastfeeding though. I, I'm pretty sure. I don't. That's why, that's why I'm saying I'm asking is she or not. I, my guess is she's not because that, uh, <laughs> that she was doing that last night, but that bugged me just a little bit. So if I get a yes, I'm not, or no, I yeah, whatever, just clarify so I can be at ease with that. Cause that kind of bugged me just a little bit. And you know, Sinead is awesome. That just, that kind of rubbed me a little bit like, huh? Why is she, why is she drinking if she's, you know, I don't know, if, but again, that's probably not something that she's going to publicly say as she's doing, but it just, <laughs> I questioned it. I questioned it. Smoville, you can tell which uh, out of the two of us is a parent. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I highly doubt that she's breastfeeding, especially with thousands of people, you know, catching on to that. So, but yeah, there's no way she's going to admit to it anyway, because she's going to get absolute shit for it. So I don't, I, I don't think that she is breastfeeding obviously but <laughs> it's funny that we're talking about that <laughs> i know that's that's one like i say like it's it's really hard it is really hard to <laughs> pinpoint negative stuff the shows are so put together well the opinions are great the characters on the show are awesome the just everything about it and so this is me nitpicking so i apologize for doing that but <laughs> <laughs> when i saw that in the notes i laughed out loud i thought it was funny <laughs> Um, so Sasha is absent for one week and then she gets demoted to the wangers table. I thought that that, that was the biggest absence that I felt and she was still on the show. I just, I just really missed her on the main table and I missed the, uh, the indie picks, the, the, the show. And you mentioned this earlier, it'll strip down. There wasn't a whole lot of like segments. They still did copsters, Blu-rays and they did the news, but, 
other than that, it was just kind of a free form show. But yeah, I missed uh, Sasha a lot on the main table. Did you? Uh, she, she still got her, her licks in. I mean, so we still got Sasha. We just didn't get her at the main table. So I, I was okay with what we got of her because of what we had as the topic. So she added in what she needed to. And then, you know, when she did, she obviously it hit home. So I, I had no problem with it. Uh, but, uh, you know, maybe next week she'll be back at the main table. I mean, if Mark will be back or not as the co-host and, you know, we'll see what that rotation looks like for the, the females at the main table. But like I said, she got, she got her comments in, you know, and her her usual uh, vulgar <laughs> vulgarity that she <laughs> adds to the show, which is honestly, I think, one of the funniest parts of the show. Anyway, no matter if she's at the main table or in the wanger table. So I, throughout the week, I do some research and I've been listening to old episodes of Schmoes. And I, I'm thinking about I was thinking about some of the questions I was going to ask JTE. I was going to ask if, like, has anyone actually ever gotten upset? Has anyone ever gotten upset with each other on the Schmoes No Show? Like, are there are there rivalries? Is there a time when it hasn't been so happy go lucky on the show? Because, to my knowledge, I can't think of anything specifically that was like bad. I know sometimes like Mark and Christian kind of uh, had a little argument a few weeks back about the fans and everything, and that was fine. But just an actual fight between two people. Um, this isn't an example of that, but it's just funny that this happened this week because uh, Sasha was very upset with Finstock and his Suicide Squad tweet. Did you happen to see that tweet from uh, Finstock? I did. I did. I saw it on uh, the, my Twitter feed, too, and uh, I literally just kind of went, okay. Like, that was kind of my reaction a little bit. Like, all right, it's a mess. They've got a while yet to fix it. Right. So I kind of was on her on her side. Um, it it kind of bummed me for a second, but I'm like, well, it's it's got a while yet, and we, maybe they, again they're, they're learning from the mistakes from what happened earlier with the other with BVS. So uh, it didn't affect me either way, but I definitely liked how that spur, that that spawned that whole new conversation because like we were they were in the middle of Bread to the Future, and we didn't get a finish to that segment because they went into that part of. The discussion and then it kind of went off into copsters break number one so we didn't really get a finish to it because the heard from everybody in that segment from sasha from uh, riley from even ace who i thought was a sh- had a shining moment there with what he talked about with the dc versus marvel and the the displaced anger that was awesome so kudos to you man that was a really cool point that you made uh, I, I i agree with you even though I probably kind of drank the Kool-Aid a little bit and uh, Finstock definitely got me talking for sure. Um, th- that's all I've got to say. That was the most I think I've heard from Ace ever, and I loved it. <laughs> so I agree with yeah. that as well. I love the uh, moment we got Harloff's troll voice back. That was hilarious. Absolutely. And yeah, um, Brett is doing a better job with it, but I thought it was hilarious that uh, he's like, I got one pulled up. And he had a negative one pulled up. All the thousands of positivity, all the all the great things said about him. And he's like, I have one pulled up. You got to read. And as you, uh, everybody out on Schmoville, um, for the love of good, I haven't seen very many uh, memes out there. I put one out there on Schmoville. You could take a look at it. Um, <laughs> but I need to see some of those posters, man. Get on the ball. Where's Jen? Where we got? We got Jen's got to get it going. Jen, um, yeah, Jen gets going, man. Um, we got to get it moving. Uh, I want to see those movie posters. I want to see all that stuff going on. But yeah, that I loved. I, I, I always love it. You know, Christian's got great the, the great voices and the, the troll voice is, is perfect. And you know, but Brett, you need to focus on that positive. You do you do bring a lot to the show. You do have great opinions on it. Uh, and just uh, you know, just ignore that hate, man. Just ignore it. it it's it does make for good uh, segments on the show, yeah. but you know, there's a lot more positive out there than there is negative. I could so probably go back. Um, I could probably go back on what I said last week and how I was a little worried Brett might get burnt out on this. I think he's probably he's fine. He's handling it healthily, and they're just having a lot of fun uh, messing with the trolls on the show. So yeah, I'll go back on what I said. I think everything's gonna be fine uh, in that aspect. So. And I have, I'm on record in saying I never had a problem. So I knew he was going to be fine. <laughs> Go to hell. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm married. I'm already there. Since we're t- <laughs> so dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, let's take a moment. We, we gave a shout out to Ace. I want to do a shout out to RB3 because apparently you did something completely impossible in like two days by uploading a ton of videos 
uh, to their channel. Did, okay, help me. Did so? Did Christian say that Smoke Plus is back online, or he stripped from Smoke Plus to add to a podcast channel? Yes, what, that that okay yes, that part. Yeah, he he took most of uh, the shows from from that from Smoke Plus to the podcast channel and did it all in two days uh, instead of a couple months. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, amazing. You're you're the man. And he also had a Q&A on uh, the Smoville Facebook group. Hopefully you guys participated in that. If not, it's there for you to go back and learn a little bit more about RB3. Uh, I loved reading a little bit about it and uh, I can't wait to have him on the show whenever we get it worked out. Now I've got to think of a whole new set of questions since, you know, he covered a lot in the Smoville Facebook group. But yeah, definitely go and check that out if you have not already. Also want to shout out Copster because uh, Amateur Hour Films released a new video, a new short film. It's part of this new thing that they're doing called Bedtime Stories. It was really fun. Did you get a chance to see it, Paul, by chance? I, I have not. I will probably do that as soon as I'm off here, though. I need to definitely catch up on a few things. Yeah, it's 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 only a few minutes long, but it was, it was good. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So definitely check that out on the Amateur Hour Films uh, YouTube channel. Also, shout out to Copster, because it's funny. If you read our conversation week to week, uh, discussing this podcast it, it's pretty much just me saying hey i sent you the podcast to put up on the youtube channel and then right after that i'll say shit i have to redo it because i forgot to put the collider bumper at the beginning <laughs> <laughs> it's a, poor cops are i don't know exactly what he does on fridays but he just has to wait for us to send him the link and he doesn't know when he's going to get it and Sometimes he's not always near a computer, and I understand that. So I think we might have cops are running around town just to uh, upload our podcast. <laughs> but I just wanted to shout out to Copster. Uh, thank you for all that you do uh, for us. And, yeah, go check out him and Cody's uh, short film. So before they got to uh, the Civil War discussion, they also talked about the uh, relevance of movie stars and if they're needed to make movies successful. That was a fun discussion. Again, this was a discussion-based schmoes no episode but then we had uh the news with kidnap sock our pit boss and i don't have a lot to say other than drunk kidnap sock was amazing and last week i said that it's probably going to become one of the most classic clips to date um I'm, I'm reading your notes here. Do, do you think that he peaked at Drunk Kid Napsock and now that he's sobered up a little bit, he's it's downhill from here? Um, yeah, yeah. I, well, yeah, I do. I think he had he had a lot to live up to. And I, I noticed a couple times, maybe three or four times, he did trip up on what he was saying. Uh, and I don't know. Yeah, I like like sasha said if he was always drunk during this segment he would die so again i understand why that's not going to happen but yeah i noticed he, he might have been going might have been trying too hard maybe trying to go too fast but i did notice you know he did slip up a little bit and the, the jokes were funny but there's a most most of the time it was he had to, he slipped up and i think again yeah i think he, he peaked uh and hopefully he'll uh he'll come back and, and uh, maybe you know because I've noticed a lot of times he's very negative, and I think I heard that too on the uh, on the on the uh, Schmoes No Show. I, I heard, you know, he, he's got to pick himself up a little more. He's he's got to be more positive. Again, I, it seems to be a theme for some reason, but he he needs to, you know, there's good in him. You know, what a whole Star Wars thing going on here. But um, <laughs> there, but it seems that he's very ne negative about himself, and he. He, I don't know. I, I just, uh, he needs to just um, do what he's doing and, and be confident in what he needs to do. And I think, yeah, like I said, he, <laughs> my setup for that question for you was just like a joke. Like I was completely joking and it's hilarious that you, your response was like dead serious and you agreed with me. I, I just thought it was funny to, to joke about him being on a downslide. I don't, I disagree that he's on one, but it's funny that you went off on that tangent. Uh, well, that's what happens when, that's what happens when we're States away and we don't have facial expressions. To, to I, go uh, off of it. Uh, I, th I mean, it's, he's always great. And last night was his la last night was no different to oh, me. Yeah. I mean, drunk can was just like a, a huge highlight, but I don't think it's taking away from any new segment afterwards, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, I did love that. He said that girls have been tweeting him, uh, saying, saying <laughs> that he turns them into water slides. That is amazing. <laughs> 
Ken, yeah, I've picked up on that too. I've seen a lot of Ken Napsock, whether it be on Screen Junkies or Schmoes. Or I went down this huge wormhole for the Josh McCuga show or uh, Between the Sheets. Like I watched a ton of those this week, and uh, two of them had Ken on there. I mean, it's something that I picked up on, and it's something I relate to as well. Like I have, you know me, Paul. I have, and you, well, it's funny. You don't even know me that well. We don't know each other that well, but you do know that I have terrible anxiety. And that's something I relate to and can uh, is very self self loathing uh, a lot. And I hate that just because I love Ken and everyone thinks he's awesome. I don't think anyone hates Ken. So um, I don't think it's affecting the news, but just aside from that, I, uh, yeah, I just want to say, Ken, we love you. Are you ready to move into uh well, it's hard, it's hard to uh, talk about the Civil War stuff. I do want to talk about everyone that joined in on the conversation, though. That's, a, that's what I want to talk about. What about yeah, you? That's fine. And, hey, man, uh, before we even do that, with um, we have some breaking news here that uh, Snelling here actually got a Cobster reference on the Cobster break number two. So there we go. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> I'm glad that he got the Boy Meets World reference. That's great. Um, and that was also cool to see that we had a little uh, little snippet of our little show on there, too. That was really, really humbling to, to see that, that uh, we were in the break and we got a little got a little taste of, of, of us. So it was awesome. So thanks, you guys, for that. I appreciate it. I really thought you were going to tease the uh, Mark Ellis $3,000 bet right there. <laughs> Cause I fr- nope, that's all you, man. That's all you. You you got you got the scoop. I'm all waiting for it. I'm waiting for that ball to be tossed in the air to hit it. I'm just Another like I'm it's just like El Mayembe. I've got the scoops here. Yeah, that Mark Ellis story is still coming later on. <laughs> um, okay, so they talked about Civil War, and uh, yeah, so we had Campia making his Phase Six debut. I'm a huge fan of John Campia. I wrote him a love letter. That's how much I love him. Um, and then we had Adam. I'm. I think I'm probably going to say his name different every time I say it, but Halavik, Halavik, I think, from uh, Superhero News and Hector Navarro. So I know Hector. I mean, of course he's on Heroes, but I've also seen him a lot on Screen Junkies. I have been a massive fan of Hector ever since I've seen him. Um, I mentioned it to Jason Inman on his Periscope that I wanted him and Hector to go toe-to-toe in the Smowdown. Uh, I would love, love to see that. Hector made his debut on uh, Schmoes last night. And I think, and I was watching the live chat, I think everyone embraced Hector. And now everyone shares the love that I have for him. How did you feel about those guys? Well, as you see the notes that I've got here, I'm like, I highlighted. and, no, and some, Okay, don't and, spoil and it. Was, what? You can't, you can't spoil the behind the scenes. People <laughs> don't need to know that I'm reading from a book. They know. They know. <laughs> They know that. That's okay. They got we had show notes, guys. It's not a big deal. But you guys, I tell you what, I put the same thing down. I mean, I was my first experience to see these two gentlemen, Adam and Hector. And I tell you what, Hector, I uh, awesome. Everything he was saying and everything he talked about, that you know, about his idea for for Zemo, that that's the movie I want to see. You know, every, he got very passionate about everything he was talking about, Spider Man, and I tell you, I just. I thoroughly enjoyed both of those gentlemen on the show. Uh, so I would love to see more. In fact, I, I just, uh, Adam and Hector on fa- on uh, Twitter and I'll be looking at, uh, their, their Facebook, not Facebook, their, uh, YouTube, uh, very soon. Uh, they, like I, they've got a fan in me now. So that was just, everything they did was just really well done. They added a lot to the conversation. Christian, uh, if you're listening to this, Jason and Hector was my choice for the Smowdown. I think it's already in the works. I think I read somewhere that they've already been trying to get him on the Smowdown. So that that might already be decided, but that's that's my choice. Um, I mean, as long as they're both in it, they don't have to be in the same match. But I'd love to, those are two people that I would love to see uh, in the Smowdown together. Yeah, like I said, I, 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 loved, I didn't know much about Adam. Um, so I'm looking forward to learning more about him. I've finally followed their YouTube channel, Superhero News. So if you guys liked them, make sure you check that out. Yeah, I mean, it just everything that everybody brought to the table. I mean, Campia brought great stuff. Um, and just everything about the discussion uh, was, you know, about the whole villain situation, you know, with it didn't work or it did work. I mean, everything was great. And uh, I mean, other than that, I mean, everything that was mentioned, I completely just 
soaked in everything. Yeah, just because this uh, this most show was so discussion based, it's kind of hard to discuss based on their right. discussions. But um, it's hard to discuss their discussions on our podcast <laughs> that recaps the recap show. <laughs> but, um, just the the cherry on top. I loved Brett's uh, carrot top joke. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was that was great. You go from Robin Williams to carrot top. All right. <laughs> Uh, moving away from last night's show again, it was a great show. I actually love the more free formed episodes and last week was kind of like that too. I mean, this didn't have the Indies. This didn't have one of Makuga's games. It was just purely discussion the whole time. I like that. Cause I also think it kind of, well, maybe not as much, but it frees up the jokes and stuff too. It just, everyone can kind of relax when it's not so segmented and everything like that. So, um, yeah. If you haven't already, make sure that they're handing out, I think, one final 30th anniversary Top Gun Blu-ray. So make sure that you, I believe, you have to comment on the Money Monster review on Schmoes No to uh, put your name in so you're, you're eligible to win that. I think they're deciding that this morning. So they might have already decided it once this podcast is up. But mm. just just in case, make sure that you do that and win that Blu-ray. Um, are we ready to go to Time Capsule? We are ready. Let's do it. So I mentioned before, I, I've been going back and in order, I'm listening to all the old Toad Hop episodes and I, I, I binged several this week as well. And I, I mentioned last week, I'm just having a lot of fun learning more about their show on Toad Hop right now. It's just mainly, it's mainly them too. I mean, they have certain familiar guests coming in and out, but as far as like the rest of the Schmoes No crew, they're not really, they haven't been present yet until now. And this is one of the things that I was most excited about. We Stuckman calls in a lot, and I'm a huge fan of Chris Stuckman. He calls in a lot, and that's always fun to listen to them talk. JTE, well, it was Josh. He called in just as like a fan. From wherever he was, he called into the show and like had a question. Like it was before JTI, before JTE. That was a lot of fun. Uh, hearing that and yeah I confirmed it I, I tweeted it and Christian confirmed that it was actually him on the episode and so that that was that was cool just to kind of see how far things have come so far um, there was also an episode the first time I heard Matt Nost who uh, hosts the top 10 show on the Schmozno Podcast Network with John Roca and him and Mark Riley were on the show together and they met the for the first time on on the show that they hosted so that was really cool and you also found out that Mark Riley I don't know if he still is, but he was a filmmaker. Did you have any idea that he was a filmmaker? Not a clue. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then another cool episode was uh, Bai Ling, who's an actress. She was in The Crow. She had an appearance on Lost and Entourage. Uh, she was a guest on the show. And I, I really enjoyed her episode because I do know her from Entourage and Lost. Lost is my favorite show of all time. So... Um, it was really cool because she like challenged Christian a little bit because Christian was trying to have a discussion about G.I. Joe retaliation. If you guys remember, they postponed the release of that film from a summer to March of the next year and blamed it on 3D. And Christian was so pissed because he knew that. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, Christian was so pissed because he thought the studio was full of shit. And Bai Ling just kind of like challenged Christian and Mark and was like, hey, guys making movies is hard and they kind of, and she was just kind of like, can you just accept that, you know, sometimes things don't work out or whatever. And I mean, they both had great points because Christian was like, well, let me clear this up. And they talked about how they're responsible for giving us a great product. And like, it was just a fun discussion because I'd never heard anybody kind of challenge the schmoes in that way. And Bai Ling had uh, great points to make. Um, so it was a really fun discussion to listen to all that. I'm having a lot of fun listening to this toad hop. I right now the episodes are only an hour long. This is when they did their hour long show, and the Toad Hop feed. There's two feeds when you go back and listen to it. There's the current one that's running the Schmoes No Movie Show uh, feed and the Schmoes No Movies feed, which is what I'm listening to right now. I look through that back catalog and it's the most exhausting thing to look at because I still have like a year of episodes to go through until I get to the next feed. And I was like, well, it's going to be no problem because all these episodes are an hour long. No. I have like four more hour long episodes and then the rest of this feed is two hours. So it is. A, I have a daunting task ahead of me listening to these shows. 
but I'm having a lot of fun and uh, I'm learning a lot. Do you remember, I know you said you remember the uh, G.I. Joe retaliation thing, but are you familiar with any of these episodes or is this farther back than what you're This is, this you is actually farther back, so you're intriguing me to go watch those as well. So I'm going to get a running list together to get that going. Uh, yeah, yeah I, rem- I remember that whole thing about uh, the, the 3D or, or the, the other issue with... Um, you know, they needed more Channing Tatum in the movie or something. I forget what it was that uh, that there was another reason why they delayed it because uh, uh, the screenings or whatever. I don't remember exactly the, the specifics, but uh, yeah, that was weird that they delayed it and they blamed it on their transitioning it to 3D. So it's right. kind of cool to uh, uh, try to take a listen to that uh, later yeah, on. Yeah, listen. I mean, I'll listen to all these in podcast form. So I like to have them on while I'm doing stuff. And yeah. It's really cool. So, I, yeah, I suggest you go back and uh, join me on Time Capsule, won't you, Paul? Um, well, hey, if you give me the actual uh, <laughs> Time Capsule beforehand, I'll be able to do it. <laughs> give me the assignment before the actual. It's- That's a behind the scenes dig because I didn't <laughs> I didn't watch the uh, Time Capsule episode until last night after the Schmoes No Live show. So it was like super late and it was way too late for me to tell Paul, hey, by the way, <laughs> I'm doing episode 115 uh, is the one I wanted to talk about as well. And maybe you've uh, seen this. This was recommended to me on YouTube by a 12 super lovely lady. She said that number 115 was a classic, one of her favorites. So thank you for suggesting that. Uh, in the bottom comment section, Smobile, you can uh, let me know what episodes to cover on the time capsule. If I haven't done it already, make sure you let me know in the comments below. I'd love to read some of those. And uh, yeah, just tell me your favorite moments and favorite episodes. This uh, episode didn't have Ellis, and Bonnie Somerville was the co-host. Are you familiar with Bonnie? Um, yes, I am. Yeah, so I am too, not because of the Smos. Like, I know she's been friends with Christian or whatever, but I know Bonnie from the OC and Friends because I'm a massive fan of both of those shows. And I um, always loved Bonnie Somerville. Like, she, she's awesome, and it's, it's hilarious that I'm going back to watch the show and she happens to be on it. Um, cause yeah, I, I know I've mentioned Tiffany is my crush, but if we're going to go to the past a little bit, then Bonnie Somerville is actually much no, most no crush, <laughs> but, um, the title of this episode was Harloff versus Somerville war begins. There was a lot of bickering between the two and it's hilarious. They have like a lot of, I, I think it's all a joke or at least they want it to appear as a joke to Schmoville because they have a lot of like sexual chemistry and they make a lot of jokes about like been there, done that talking about each other. And just th- there's a lot of references to things like in their past or in their friendship aside from the show. But I, I think they want it to appear as an act. It might not be an act because I remember listening to the knapsack files uh, with Christian as a guest. You can go listen to the knapsack files podcast. Christian was a guest. And I think Ken was trying to hit Christian hard with questions about Katie Sackoff and Bonnie. And if I remember it correctly, I listened to it a long time ago, but if I remember it correctly, there was actually a pass between Christian and Katie Sackoff, but he never actually dated Bonnie. So yeah, I'm not sure if they're just having a lot of fun or whatever, but that's, that's what I take away from that. But also might be completely wrong and they might be hiding that. Yeah, they have history together, but whatever. It's just something fun to listen to. Of course, you have just Makuga standing in the back texting, and he's not offering much of anything. But I did see Wildman TV for the first time ever. So that was cool hearing him talk about TV. Um, yeah, so are you familiar with this Bonnie Somerville versus Katie Sackoff rivalry? You know, I've heard um, rumblings, and I haven't gone in-depth as – I'm pretty sure uh, most of Schmoville has. Yes. Um, but I definitely, I, I know s- at least enough to kind of go in hesitantly <laughs> to, to go to it. Right. Well, I, I, I want Schmoville to comment because this episode, I feel like there's a lot of history that predates this episode. And with my podcast run, I just haven't caught up to that point yet. So in the comment section below, give me a brief rundown of what you know about Katie and Bonnie, uh, or at least let me know where I can go to look more of that up. Obviously, I'm always researching the episodes, but if you just kind of help me out a little bit, that'll help, and I'll know more a little bit about that. Um, it was also cool to hear T- Tyler Myers call in. He's an admin for the Facebook or the yeah the Facebook group, and I mentioned him earlier. We're trying to get him on the show. So I, there's just a lot of 
a lot of cool things going back. Uh, I mean, that's an obvious statement. Obviously, it's always cool, but it, it's just funny to see how everything came together. Also learned that Mark Riley and Bonnie Somerville are Harlov's daughter's godparents, which I did not know. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. That's all I've got really for Time Capsule. I'm just, uh, I'm really enjoying this segment. I know, like, we talked about fan fatigue a lot since I'm adding this whole other show to my plate uh, and feeling pressured to binge. Yes, I, I am getting fan fatigue, but I'm also loving it. So, yeah. Ne- next week, I'll do a better job of letting you know what's going on in Time Capsule, Paul. I promise. That would be great. <laughs> um,. That, that's all I've got on that. Uh, yeah, let me know. Suggest episodes in the comment section below, and also talk to me about Katie and uh, Bonnie, and you guys go nuts. Talk about it as well. Um, okay, I have horribly teased this Mark Ellis $3,000 bet story. I've horribly teased it. There's no doubt about that. Are we ready to hear this incredible story? I am, finally, Yes. Watch, I'm going to go to pull up the message and it's not going to work. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is a film beef, or not film beef, I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm sorry. What podcast am I on? This is, (laughs) this is a Schmoville exclusive, okay? You've heard it here first. Okay, so on Movie Talk earlier this week, Mark Ellis, in his intro, mentioned that he was going to win $3,000 and they would not let on what it was about. And I was a little bit angry because I was like, come on, you can't just bring it up and not follow through. So Christian said that he was going to mention it on the Smoke Night Movie Show, or Smoke Night Show, excuse me. He forgot. So I've got the exclusive here. So I'm just going to straight up read Christian's message if, if that works. Um, he was, okay, this part doesn't make sense. Christian says he was at the urinal. And he asked Ashley and Ellis a question. So I'm not sure what the layout is of the studio over there. I don't know if the urinal is just out in the middle of the open uh, or what. But Christian is peeing at the urinal, and he asked Ashley and Mark if they would tongue swipe the bottom of the urinal for $3 million. (laughs) So the discussion, for one, they both said yes. So Mark Ellis and Ashley Mova would lick the bottom of the urinal for $3 million, which... I can't lie, I would too. They both said yes, but then Harloff was kept kept on and was dropping the price to see how low they would go to lick the bottom of the yurtel. Mova stopped at twenty five thousand dollars, and Mark said he would do it for three thousand. <laughs> and Christian said that the doctor bills alone would be worth the three thousand dollars. <laughs> so Mark would actually be out and have no money. But I love that story because. I don't know. That, that's just, it's just funny to hear like what they're doing at the studio, like behind the scenes, like it's ridiculous, but yet more than ever, I'm curious why he's talking to Ashley and Mark at the urinal. But uh, what, what do you take away from that story? I take away trying to get in my head, the layout of the, of the actual play. Like how is, <laughs> how is that? Is there a unisex one? Is, I mean, we're not going to a political debate here, but how is, how in the world, <laughs> Ah oh, man, that that's that's really really funny. Um, yeah, three thousand. <laughs> okay, Mark must be hard up for money. What's the, uh, that's the only thing I can take away for it. How how much money uh, would it take to get you to uh, tongue swipe the bottom of the urinal? I'm a teacher, man. I'd go for the <laughs> I'd go for as much money as possible. Um, because I mean, it, it would have to be a rant. I mean, if we're going into specifics here. Would it, would, would, it, would it have to be one that we go to a lot? Do we, do we know it's clean? Is it, is, it, is it such a random one that's in a public area? I mean, is it, I don't know, but. Well, let's just, okay. Let's just say the collider urinal, the one that Harloff is peeing at or the one that's in the middle of the room and could have God knows what on it. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. I'm a teacher. So I'd go for the highest price. <laughs> I have no money. I think I would do it for 10000 I think that's the lowest I'd go. Anything less than that, I'd be like, well, no, nah, okay. Like, uh, again, I, there's there's factors like the cleanliness of the toilet, but uh, 10000 is probably where I would stop. That's the happy medium between Ellis and uh, Ashley. So what a great <laughs> way to end the show. Um, that was awesome. I love that story. Hopefully it was worth the wait for you guys. I, I think we're going to get a ton of comments like, that wasn't even worth the wait, or that's not even that funny, but whatever. I thought it was hilarious. 
um yeah that's what those guys are doing behind the scenes um before the, you know they're all prim and proper on collider movie talk um that's 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 my closing so uh paul you feel good about this episode is there anything else you want to bring up just the you know the quick little end there with christian and dan uh dan gets the point point. and that was you know we we got a little taste we got that starting up a little bit so i am very much intrigued in that matchup to see what Dan will do next to try to get back at Christian. And then uh, no, hearing that's Andy Signore, not Dan. Oh, Andy. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 Andy. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> with um, you know, him getting the tease and uh, just seeing the memes popping out of there, getting, um, getting that going is, is really kind of cool. And uh, that little quip at the end too, hearing about a web series that Sasha's writing. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, crazy. that's interesting. I, 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 is that, I mean, is that going to be like a, I mean, possibilities are endless there. Is it actually going to be like a web show? Like uh, it's like the office. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the, that that's, I'm intrigued. And that's uh, probably why they even, they did it uh, to get the, to get us talking about it. So, I mean, um, even Schmoville out there, if you have heard this in the past, haven't any idea what this might be, maybe what you want to see, is it going to be like a friends type of show? I mean, I don't know. It's going to, Sasha's writing it. So it could be, anything so i'm i'm excited to see where that's going to go and like she said she's on page 17 on it um again is it is she writing it weekly is she i mean i don't know it was just it was neat to hear that that is moving forward yes i am extremely extremely excited for that web series for sure also uh since i've got uh some of the smos uh attention I would love to still see that collider behind the scenes, like documentary type thing. They were talking about it uh, around the new year. I think right at the end of 2015, they were talking about how people, yeah. people were wondering it, it more than just the tour of the studio, but actually seeing like how an episode of movie talk comes together. And it was kind of like this doc documentary that they promised um, a web documentary, not like a full length. So I'm still sure. looking for that. Hopefully they uh, have time to get that all together because I think that would be really, really awesome. And also include, or maybe just do a separate one for the uh, Schmoes No Show and see how that comes together as well. That's all I've got. Um, thank you so much for listening to the Schmoville podcast. We have had, had a lot of great fans. I've seen the YouTube comments. A lot of the same guys are sticking with us and commenting, and we love it. Uh, please remember that if you're not a fan of YouTube so much, then you've got the iTunes version as well. So definitely subscribe on iTunes or however you listen to podcasts. I think it's on most uh, distributors. If it's not, then let me know and I'll get it out there. So yeah, that, that podcast is there for you and it would also help to rate and review our show on iTunes. Um, do you have anything else, Paul? No, no, I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Where can the people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter at the Mr. Wolf. That's T H E M R W U L F F. No, I'm not related to Clark. Um, and I'm also testing the waters with Periscope. So I'm trying Periscope. I know Facebook Live and Periscope. They're kind of people are kind of uh, got opinions on both. I'm going to try some Periscope things here and there. So maybe even look out for that. Perfect. You can find me on Twitter at Film Beef Snell and check me out on the Film Beef Podcast. We had a massive episode reviewing Captain America Civil War with uh, John Roca. So definitely go back and check that out. And Phil and I are reviewing uh, that Tom Hiddleston movie High Rise this week. And we're also doing uh, Game of Thrones recaps. So we're having a lot of fun doing that. Please check that out. And I guess we'll see you next week uh, after another great week of uh, Schmoes. See you next time. Peace out, Mother Fs. <laughs>